Entropy, one of the most fascinating topics in all of physics. Irreversible processes cause us to lose some energy. I'm sorry. This statement is actually correct as written. Irreversible processes cause us to lose some, but not necessarily all, of the ability to do work. So this friction, things that are irreversible, um, cause losses in the system. And this partial loss can be expressed in terms of a concept called entropy. So let's define the entropy change. The entropy change for a particular process is the heat added during that process divided by the Kelvin temperature under which the process is taking place. So let's show that the entropy change of a Carnot engine is zero. So this is the total entropy change So I'm adding together the entropy change of the cold reservoir and add to that the entropy change of the hot reservoir. The engine itself, the heat engine, ends up in the same state as it had before. So it doesn't have any entropy change for a Carnot engine. So entropy is defined as the heat added divided by the temperature change. Well, the cold reservoir has an amount QC of add that heat added to it. So this comes in as a positive number because we're adding heat. Remember that, the, that this guy is the heat added. We have to remember there. So that's the heat added divided by the temperature of the cold reservoir. Now, the change in entropy of the hot reservoir has to reflect the idea that I'm taking heat from the hot reservoir. So instead of adding an amount of heat to it, I'm subtracting it. So that's why this change in entropy, or the, the heat added, is a negative number divided by TH. But lo and behold, uh, this is zero. And let me show you why. QC over QH, as we've mentioned many times for a Carnot cycle, is proportional to the temperature. It's independent of the material used to, to create the, uh, the, used, the material used in the engine. Well, I can rewrite this. <coughs> if I divide both sides by TC, then these TCs will cancel. And if I divide, if I multiply both sides by QH, then these QHs will cancel. And I end up with QC over TC equals QH over TH. Well, have a look at this equation and compare with this. QC over TC equals QH over TH. So I can replace this by QH over TH. And then I'm subtracting QH over TH, and that just gives me zero. So a, the Carnot engine, it, there's no change in entropy for the Carnot engine. And this is. Um, the statement that captures this. It's really a restatement of the second law of thermodynamics. The total entropy of the universe does not change when a reversible process occurs, like the Carnot engine, and does increase when an irreversible process occurs. It's called the <laughs> law of increase of entropy. <coughs> So a quick example, the uh, figure shows tw 1,200 joules of heat spontaneously flowing through a copper rod from a hot reservoir at 650K to a cold reservoir at 350K. 
determine the amount by which this process changes the entropy of the universe. So what we're going to do is um, find that the total change in entropy will be the change in entropy in the hot in the cold reservoir plus the change in entropy in the hot reservoir. Just have to add up the, all the changes of entropy to find the total change in entropy of the universe from this process. So the, um, the change in entropy in the cold reservoir is the heat added to the cold reservoir divided by the temperature. Well, that's 1,200 joules added to the cold reservoir divided by 350K. And then the heat added to the hot reservoir is actually negative because it's subtracted from the, hot, from the hot reservoir. Just like we talked about in the previous example, we're subtracting 1,200 joules, 650K, and so we end up with a uh, change in entropy of 1.6 joules per Kelvin. And it increased. It's a positive number. And just like the, um, this guy here, uh, the entropy increases when an irreversible process occurs. Another quick example, find the change in entropy of a 2.3 kilogram block of ice that melts slowly, reversibly, at 273K. So the change in the entropy of the ice as it melts at a constant temperature. So this is a reversible process. It's the heat added to the ice, which will be the mass of the ice times the specific, uh, the latent heat of fusion. You can go back and look that up a couple chapters ago. Mass times latent heat of fusion divided by the temperature. That's the increase in the entropy of the ice as it goes from this ordered state to this disordered state. Now, since it's a reversible process, if you capture all that um, energy, then you can, um, you can reverse that process and change the entropy back this other way. Uh, here's a uh, very catastrophic example of the law of increase of entropy, going from an order state, ordered state like that block of ice to a very disordered state, um, the building blowing up.